you for your love, your kindness. We thank you for your tender mercies on this morning, oh God. We thank you that your blessing and, and your mercies are new every day. So we come this morning, God, to lift up every situation that is not like you, that comes to hinder us or to come against us in, in any way, form, or fashion. Lord, we come right now pleading the blood of Jesus upon this service, that you would have your way, that you would throw your weight around this place, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God, not by might nor by power, but by your spirit that you begin to move through the chairs, through the aisles, the parking lot, God. Have your way this morning, oh God. Throw your weight around this morning, oh God. Heal, set free, and deliver on this morning, God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we pull down every stronghold, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we lose forth the blessings, we lose forth an anointing, we lose forth power, we lose forth your spirit, we lose forth deliverance. In the name of Jesus, we pull down everything, God, that desires to sift us as weak, God, and we lose forth your spirit, we lose forth your power, we lose forth the anointing. Holy Ghost, have your way. Do what you want to do this morning. While we're in your house, God, we ask you to go into our homes and do what you need to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, if you believe that, come on and clap your hands. Clap your hands in the sanctuary. Clap your hands, all ye people. Clap your hands, hallelujah. Make it sound like victory. Make it sound like you're glad to be in service for another time. Come on and clap your hands. Clap them like you mean it. Clap them like you love God this morning. Clap like you
somebody shout and give him glory. Celebrate our righteous father. Celebrate our worthy father. Because from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun, we call him glory. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And we'll find out the reason. Right here, just 
you had the type of parents, grandparents that I had. My mom would always teach me, whenever somebody does something for you, you always say thank you. If God has done anything for you, would you just clap your hands and tell the Lord thank you? That should be every person in here. He woke you up this morning. Anybody had a rough week? God allowed you to make it to church? I just, Lord, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, God. The old folks said if I had 10,000 tongues, I still couldn't thank him enough. He's been just that good. Father, we love you. We thank you. We honor you. We give you glory. We thank you now for this moment that we have. And Father, I pray now that you would allow uh, distractions uh, to leave and that we may focus, be in tune, God. Father, I pray now for my neighbor, the person standing next to me. I'm praying for them, God. God, I set my agree myself in agreement with them, whatever it is that they need or dealing with or going through. I pray now that you will bless them, God. God, open every door that needs to be opened for my neighbor, God. God, bless their home. God, bless the cars they ride in. Bless their jobs, their finances, their children. Father, I pray now, I plead the blood of Jesus upon them. God, I'm praying that before this week is out, before next Sunday, that God, you will do something that they believe in you for. Somebody's going to get the phone call. Somebody's going to get the email. Somebody's going to get the yes. Bless my neighbor, God. Bless my neighbor, God. Bless my neighbor, God. I'm praying for them, God. That God, I'm asking you to do it for them. Whatever it is that they stand in need of, let's pray for them, God. Throw your loving arms around them, God. Let them know all is well. God, we ask all of this in your darling son Jesus' name, and we pray. Amen. Come on, give the Lord another hand clap of praise. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We greet all of you in L-O-V-E. Love it. It's good to see so many of you on this beautiful Sunday morning uh, that God has blessed us with. And yes, all of those who are viewing and watching, we thank God for you allowing us to come uh, into your beautiful homes. Wherever you may be on this morning, uh, we thank God for all of you. As always, I thank God for this wonderful church, all of the great leaders. Come on, can you help me thank God for great leadership? Uh, all of you, I thank God for Beacon Light, all of our great leaders. As always, I thank God for my lovely wife, Lady Iris, my girl. Just appreciate her uh, so much. And everybody always knows that on the first Sunday of every month, we want to say happy birthday to every person who has a birthday in April. So if you're sharing the best month, if your birthday is in the best month, would you please stand to your feet? Because you're celebrating the best. Oh, no. Come on, y'all. Oh, look at all these April. Oh, come on. Look at all these April babies. Look at all these April babies. Can y'all just take a moment and tell us happy birthday? Yeah, we going down the whole month. Oh. Gee, happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday to all of y'all uh, who are celebrating birthdays uh, on uh, this month. Uh, yeah, y'all reading it right. Uh, today, today is my birthday. Yeah. Turn down for what? <laughs> I'm glad I'm joking. I'm joking. Listen, so I thank you. <laughs> oh boy. Thank God. I'm getting older now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many years ago. Many years ago. I don't know if I would have made it to church on Sunday morning. But God is doing a new thing. Come on, thank God for all of those who are celebrating birthdays. We thank God for all of you, all of our first-time visitors. We appreciate all of you so much. And then, of course, new members' orientation is going to be Saturday. For all of our new members on uh, April 27th, right here in our main sanctuary, lunch will be provided uh, for all of you. I did see, of course, uh, Tricia and Lamb. They were in our 8 o'clock service, but Dr. P, uh, wave your hand. She's in service this morning. Y'all, we laid to rest her grandmother on yesterday, but she's in church today. Can y'all help me thank God for this family? 
I'm telling you, listen, 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 please hear me. I got to take a moment. It was one of the best homegoing celebrations I've ever attended. Her grandmother was 98 years young. Come on, y'all, 98. I'm telling you, they spoke well of her. And I'm telling you to see her in church on the next day because that's what their grandmother taught them, how to have a relationship with God. And I just appreciate the relationship uh, that I have with them. And I would love to say their grandmother did a great job. Once again, let's thank God for that family. Awesome job, Dr. P, on yesterday. I want all of us now to prepare our hearts and minds to give unto the Lord. Here at Beacon Light, we are a tithing church. I want every person, if God has blessed you with income, uh, if God has blessed you with a job, you're truly blessed to have it uh, in this day and time. If you're in need of an offering envelope, our hardworking deacons are in the house to assist all of us today. If you need an offering envelope, would you please lift your hand and our hardworking deacons will assist you on today. The rest of us are pulling out our mobile devices, our iPhones, our Androids. You can use whatever... Uh, However, whatever it is you use to give, I'm going to ask if you would please uh, take it out. I want you to know that everything is safe and secure. All of the platforms, here it is. You can do text to give. Takes, text to 28950. Cash app, Beacon Light BR. Go to our website, beaconlightofbatonrooch.org. Spell all the way out. Go to the giving key and you can give online. I want all of us now to take a moment, even those who are viewing and watching, as we worship God in and through our giving. If you don't mind, I want to pray with you and pray for you. Let us pray. Father, I love you and I thank you that truly, God, you have been good to all of us. You have blessed us. And Father, I pray now for every person who's trusting uh, sowing seed into good soil because, God, you said there is seed time and harvest. I pray now for every person and I pray now, God, that you continue to bless them and keep your hand upon them. So, Father, we thank you now for this time of worship, and we're now giving, and now, God, we're expecting a harvest. Bless now every seed. Bless every soil. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, I got to do it one more time. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I'm about to say something, and I hope you don't get offended. But if you do, it's all good. I need somebody to shout, harvest, favor. Increase all three are up on me in Jesus' name, amen. All of those who have offering envelopes, I'm going to ask if you would please at this time, would you please come and lay that offering envelope here on the altar and let us receive our praise team as they take us higher in the service.
do me a favor. Would you clap like you love Jesus? Come on, if you go ahead, clap like you love. Him. It's okay. We in church. It's okay. It's okay to clap like you love Him. Hallelujah. It's okay. There's no other name. There's no sweeter name. Sometimes you just gotta call on the name of demons. Tremble at the name of Jesus. The Bible says when you pray, pray in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you for what you have sown and invested into the kingdom of God. I want to, I want to always be, I always want to be accountable because I want you all to know Lady Iris just walked out, but um. I, you know, sometimes, not sometimes, y'all don't see um, me giving because, I, first of all, I don't have Cash App. I don't have none of that. Iris does all of my giving, and I want y'all to always know this, and this is the truth. I will never lie to you that I'm the biggest giver in this church, and I should be. Am I right? I'm the leader. I should be. Not that I make more money than y'all. I'm just the biggest. I'm here every Sunday, so I always give. Amen? So I always want to be accountable uh, to everyone. Now listen, just for a few moments. Thank you, LC. I want to, 8 o'clock didn't get, really give me a chance to preach my message. Because I, yeah, I worked on this message. So that means 10 o'clock, y'all going to have to sit here and listen to it. Because I worked on this. So somebody going somebody to listen to this message. Somebody going to listen to it. Somebody going to listen. Now listen, last Sunday was Resurrection Sunday. And a lot of times after resurrection, you really never hear what takes place after the resurrection, after Easter. But this morning, I want to show you, and I have some scriptures um, that I want to show you, that I believe there's somebody in here that this is going to bless you. I want to just preach from the subject of, it's not over. It's not, it's, listen to me. No matter what you go through in life, it is never over. We go through things in life. We hit bumps in the road. Doors are shut. Things happen. People walk out on us. But it is never over. Never. When possible, now seems impossible. Here it is. Please hear me, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. I love watching. Don't make fun. I got to just talk to you this morning. HGTV. I love, let me tell you why I, I like watching it. Because I get good ideas. I love being into rental properties and all of those things. And I love watching. Watch this. But I love to see contractors and builders take an old dilapidated house or a building. And it takes it from ruin. Watch this. Um. It's, it's, it's the house that nobody wants. It's the one that everybody passed by because it seems as if it has no value. Uh, can I talk to somebody? Because some people have been sleeping on you. And sometimes you look like ain't nothing really with you, but they don't understand that I'm in process because when I meet the right person and the right owner and the right connections, that something is about to change because sometimes people look at you the wrong way. But you don't understand that it's not over. Just because you caught me, watch this, don't judge me based on where you meet me. Because where you meet me, I may not always be. Here it is, watch this. But I, I love when they take a house that, that has low value and transform it and refurbish it. And now all of a sudden, what used to seem old now seems new. Back then, they didn't want me. Can I preach it the way I feel? Y'all know what I'm talking about. They walked out on you. Back then, they didn't. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Pray, pray for me. They pray for me. But, but here's, here's the part. I love, I love cars. I love cars. I love uh, old school cars. And I like to see, watch this. When they, when they take an old car that, that, that looks like a piece of junk. 
uh, uh, you, you can go, you, you go get it out the junkyard because it's there because it has no value. But then, watch this, when you refurbish or renew or restore, uh, anybody know what I'm talking about? See, see, because I, I love when, see, some people don't even see the transformation. That's, you see where I am. But you don't know what I've been through. Can I say it this way? You see the glory, but you don't know my story. Now, do I have anybody in here that God has brought you through a transformation and he's still working on you, making you better than what you was in the beginning? Here it is. Watch this. Watch this. See, see here it is. Let me say it this way. I love when individuals take something that seems to be trash. Here it is. And somebody restores it. Now it's a treasure. But here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. In John chapter 21. Just tap your neighbor. I only have three of them. Tap your neighbor. Say neighbor. It's not over. Here it is. Watch this. Here it is. Jesus in, in, chapter, in John 21. Jesus has now been resurrected. And here it is. Now it, it's, it's, he's on his way. Uh, he, he revisits the disciples. But there's a fellow by the name of Peter. Peter, watch this. If, oh, I got to show you this. Uh, Mark chapter 16, verse 7. Peter, in Mark chapter 16, verse 7, don't miss it. Tap your neighbor. I only get two more. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, don't disturb me right now. I'm locked in. Here it is. Watch this. Mark chapter 16, verse 7. You got to see this. Look what the Bible says. You got to read it for yourself. Watch it. But go. This is what, this is what Jesus tells Mary. Go. Tell his disciples and Peter. It's not over, Peter. I, thought, I know you thought you messed up. And I know you thought you blew it. But watch this. He says, go tell the disciples and Peter. Now watch this. God specialized in taking something or someone that others may look over. Here it is. Watch this. That seems to be nothing, but makes them special. Here it is. Watch this. Watch. That, that, here it is. I want you to see, first of all, I want you to see Peter's fumble. I, I want you to see how Peter then messed up. And here it is. Watch this. In Matthew 26, verse 69, I want you to see this. Peter messes up. Watch this. You see him fumble. Here's the fumble right here in Matthew 26, verse 69. Now, Peter sat outside the courtyard. A servant girl came to him saying, you are also, you were also with Jesus of Galilee. Here it is. But he denied it before them and saying, I do not know what you're saying. Verse 71. And when he had gone out to the gateway, another girl saw him and says to those who were there, this fellow also was with Jesus of Nazareth. Here it is. But again, he denied it with an oath. He said, I'm telling y'all, I, I don't know the man. But here it is, watch this, verse 73. And a little later, those who stood by came up and said to Peter, Surely you are also with them for your speech. He says, you sound like you from Baton Rouge. Oh, you sound like you from BR. You, I, I know that accent. I know, I know how y'all talk. Watch this. And look what Peter says. Then he began to, oh no, read the Bible. He began to curse. Where my, where my Peter's at? Uh, <laughs> where my Peter's at? Where my, okay, no, no, I'm going to sit right there. Where my Peter, where my Peter's at? Got three people on this. Oh, you know what? That's why I don't like messing with y'all. Huh? Y'all was just, anyway, watch this. Peter began to cuss and swear. Boy, they got some Peters up in here. Here, Peter, there, Peter, everywhere, Peter, Peter. I'm in the Bible. I'm in the Bible. I'm just in the book. Watch this. I do not know this man. Immediately the rooster crow, uh, crow. Watch this. Now, here's the part I want you to see. Peter denies Jesus three times. When Jesus began to tell, watch this, all the disciples about what was about to take place, he said, they're going to beat me, they're going to mock me, I'm going to be crucified. And check out Peter. Peter says to the Lord in Luke 22, 
Verse 31, 34. I'm going to show you how all of this ties together. Look at your neighbor. Say, only get one more. Say, neighbor, I promise you it's not over. <laughs> Look what the Bible says in Luke 22, verse 31. And the Lord said to Simon, Simon, which is Peter, indeed, Satan has asked of you, for you, that you, he may sift you as wheat. But I like verse 32. Look what the Lord says. But I prayed for you that your faith shall not fail. And when you have returned to me, help somebody else. Watch this. In other words, Jesus is letting Peter know what's about to take place. Peter, you're about to do something, but I'm not going to forget about you. Here it is, watch this. He says, but he said to him, Lord, I'm ready to go with you both to prison and death. Peter says, I'll give my life for you. But this is the same Peter who denied him three times. And watch this in Matthew 26 and verse 59. Verse 58, look at verse 58. Verse 58 says, but Peter followed him at a distance. Here it is, here it is, picture this, picture it. They're taking Jesus, watch this, and Peter is sitting and watching from a distance. He, can, can, I get, can I put a pistol right there? I don't, you got to remember that Peter was always up close with Jesus. When Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane before he went to the cross, the Bible says that he took three disciples with him a little further, which was Peter, James, and John. Peter was always close to Jesus. Watch this. See, I don't ever really want to be a distance at God with Jesus. Because here's the thing. Watch this. You could be on the premise and still not be in his presence. Preach, boy. Because watch this. Here it is. Here it is. Peter. Peter. Peter is, is now at a distance. You know, sometimes when you come to church, this is how when you know you're at a distance. It's when your, your praise ain't right. When your worship don't seem genuine. See, that's when you really know that you're at a distance. But I want you to see Peter's fumble. Watch this. See, Peter is following Jesus from a distance. And, and more than so, Jesus was like, Peter, you used to be my homie. Now you act like you don't know me. Oh, y'all, I'm sorry. I, I, Lord, I got to stop listening to that rap music. Y'all pray for me. I got to stop. I got to stop. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Hear this. See, never say never. Never say what you would not do. Because sometimes you get around the... Oh, let me move on. Never say never. Never say never. Watch this. Here it is. Here it is. But Peter, but Peter felt bad for what he had done. Watch this. Matthew 26, verse 75. Matthew 26 and verse 75 says that Peter, watch this, he leaves out. And now Peter, here it is, is weeping bitterly. The Bible says, here it is, watch this. And Peter remembered the words of Jesus who had said to him before the rooster crows, you would deny me three times. So he went out and he wept bitterly. Something is wrong. If sometimes you don't feel bad for what you do. Okay, let me, oh, y'all oh, too quiet. Let, let, me, let me move on. You see Peter's fumble, watch this. You see his fumble, but now I want you to see Peter's setback. See, Pete, watch this. See, your setback is a setup for your comeback. Because sometimes when you get set back, you got to come out stronger. I wish I had a few people that understand. Anybody besides me ever had a setback? But when God gave you another chance, you said, I'm coming back stronger. I'm coming back wiser. I'm going to be better than what. Here it is. Now, remember. Now, wait, remember. Peter is a fisherman by trade. This is what he does. He's, he's a, before he start walking and working with Jesus, he was a fisherman. In John chapter 21, verse 3, let's pick up. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we're going with you. They went out and immediately got into the boat. And that night, they caught nothing. Nothing. Here it is, verse 4. But when the morning has come, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I don't know who you are, but God just told me to tell you that a new day has shown up.
And somebody's about to start something that you've never started before because you're about to do something you've never done before. But God told me to tell you it's about to be a new day. Watch this, watch this, watch this. See, watch this. See, Peter is trying to go back to what God took him from. I, I would go deep into that because that's some serious stuff right there. But watch this. But it's, it's almost like, it's like going to church. Stay with me right here. It's like going to church and all of a sudden, watch this, you go to church. You're in church every Sunday. I mean, you, you, you're really trying to get it together. Now, now uh, listen, you, you go to church, you've been walking with Jesus for a while now. And then, um, and, and, you know, then somebody invites you. Like Peter invited them to go fishing. Somebody invites you to go fishing. Well, somebody invites you to go to the club. Why are y'all so quiet? Here it is, watch this. And now all of a sudden, you haven't been in the club in a minute. You, you haven't been in a minute. You, you're just growing up. You just, you, you just, you just. Now, and when you get in there, they playing music. And you're like, I don't even know that song. You ain't, the, the drinks are watered down. It's hot in there. And then after you leave and get home, you'll be like, what in the world? Did anybody, did, why, why did I even go out there? I didn't waste five hours of my day. I can't never get back. Here it is, watch this, watch this, watch this, here it is. See, when you decide to go back, God says that's still part of the plan. It's still, I promise you, it's still part of the plan. Because watch this, Peter went fishing all night. But guess what he caught? Nothing. This is my last one. Tell somebody, say neighbor, God knows what he doing. Y'all miss your shout cue. I wish I had a few people that hit some bumps in the road that God told me to tell you, I promise you, I know what I'm doing. I know you've been to hell and back. I know it don't feel good, but you got to know I know what I'm doing. Tell somebody it's a setup. Watch this. See, see, here it is. Watch this. Watch this. It's still part of the plan. Peter must have thought that it was over for him. So he decides to go back fishing. Watch this. But I got good news for you this morning. Here it is. Let me jump through it. Let me, let me cut through it. Here it is. Let me cut through the field. Right here. Number three. Here it is. Jesus found him, fed him, and then favored him. Even after Peter denied Jesus. Here it is. Watch this. Ooh, here it is for free. If you're not dead, he's not done. God says, I'm not done with you yet. I wish I had somebody who believed in God for something. God says, I'm going to take something that seems to be nothing, and I'm going to make it something. I got a few people in here already that can give God praise when I look back over my life and see where the Lord has brought me from. I just get happy. It's not over. Watch this. Here it is. Here it is, here it is. Watch this. See, God ain't just give you a second chance. He gave you another chance. Because I blew my second chance a long time ago. He just keeps feeding me. He keeps favoring me. He keeps finding. Watch, here it is, watch this. See, here, here it is. Watch verse 5. Watch verse 5. Let me walk. Let me walk. Verse 5 says, Then Jesus said to them, Children, have you any food? Do y'all have? He says, Do y'all have what y'all need? And guess what they said? Nope. He says, watch this. He said to him, said to them, cast your net on the right. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I just got it. I just got it. He said, cast your net. They caught nothing. What's your net worth? What, what, what's, your, what's, what's your net worth? Because sometimes when you don't have God, your network is still zero. I'm not talking about your bank account. I'm not talking about your portfolio. Um, let me move on. Watch this. Here it is. Watch this. Here it is, Peter. Peter, he says, watch this. Here it is. He says in verse 6, and he said to them, cast your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. He says, God says, all you got to do is just listen. He says, watch this, you're going to have so much. 
He said that you ain't going to be able to contain abundantly. He said he'll give you more than enough. I wish I had a few people that's believing God for something. Because God told me to tell you this morning that it's not over. That God said I can give you more than enough peace. I'll give you more than enough joy. That sometime when you walk into the room, some people get happy because the joy that's in you, that you got so much that you got to give it away. Let me talk to the person who keeps trying to run. God says you can run, but I'm going to find you. He says, and when I find you, I'm going to feed you. And when I feed you, he said, I'm going to favor you. I wish I had a few people that don't mind that God said, I just want you to surrender. Because, oh, oh, help me, Holy Ghost, right here. Watch this. While I'm in the text. Keisha, I'm in the text on this one, Keisha. Watch the Bible. Oh, my. I didn't got happy. Watch this. Look what he says in verse 7. Therefore, the, that disciple who, who Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. Now, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garments, for he had removed, watch this, and plunged into the sea. Peter saw it was Jesus, jumped in the water, and started swimming to Jesus. But here it is, watch this. See, this is really not about fish. This is about Peter. But watch this, but watch this. The catch really wasn't the fish. The big catch of the day was Peter. I don't know who you are, but God says in the next few weeks, you're going to be a big catch to me. I, I'm, you're going to be my big catch. Watch this. But here's, here's the part. Here's the part I want you to see. He says in verse 8, but the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from the land, uh, about 200 cubits, dragging the net with fish. They got so much that they got to drag 153 fish in one scoop. They dragging the fish, but I ain't want what I want you to see. I got happy about verse 9. Verse 9 says, then, as soon as they had came to, come to land, they saw a fire of coals there. Fish laid on it and bread. Y'all don't even know when to shout. Now, because I don't know what kind of bread it was. I don't know if it was garlic toast. Texas toast. I don't know if it was them biscuits from Red Lobster. You ever had them biscuits from Red Lobster? Them biscuits from Red Lobster is fire. Them cheese, cheddar cheese biscuits, they are the bomb. I'm telling you. Oh, Jesus, when they first come out the oven. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think I caught up on the bread. But watch this. Here it is. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Watch this. Watch this. Here's don't miss it. What they had been looking for all night. I said what they've been looking for all night. The Bible says, watch this, go back to verse 9, watch this. He said that he had what they've been looking for. And it was already prepared. I don't know who you are, but God says you can't give up. I can't give up on you because I got something that's prepared for you. I got something that's ready. I wish I had somebody who understands in the next few months, God says, I got something ready for you. It is already prepared. What you've been looking for, he says, I already have. Watch this, watch this. Here it is, I got to go watch this, watch this. He, and, and, and not just fish. And he threw in some bread. Now, I don't know what kind of fish it was. But uh, I believe from us, who from Louisiana down south, they probably had fried catfish. You know that, and you know when that fried catfish first come up, woo Jesus! I don't know. It might be, it could have been fried tilapia. It could have been blackened. I don't know. But he had some fish on the coal. Now watch here, here, here it is. Come on, ministers and elders, come on. Watch this. Now here, here it is. Now I want you to see this. I want you to see this and hear this. Come, don't, don't worry about them, y'all. Pay attention to me. Please, 
Don't worry about them. Don't worry about, don't worry about none of them. Come right here. Because I don't want you to miss this. He favored him. Watch this. Now, let's, let's walk. Let's walk. Verse 10. Verse 10 says, Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish which you have caught. Verse 10. Verse 11. Simon Peter went up and dragged the net full of large fish. Lord, Jesus. 153. Although there were so many, the net was now broken. Verse 12 says, Jesus said to them, come and eat breakfast. Yet none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Knowing that it was the Lord. Verse 13. Jesus then came and took the bread. What we're about to do, commune. He took the bread, he gave it to them, likewise the fish. But verse 14, this now is the third time Jesus showed himself to the disciples after he raised himself from the dead. Verse 15. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Peter, walk with me. I'm more than sure they were walking down the peaceful shores. And as they was walking, Jesus tells Peter, he says, Peter, let me ask you a question. He said, Peter, do you love me more than these? Here's the question. What is your these? Was he talking about the fish? Was he talking about the people he was hanging out with? He says, do you love me more than these? But nobody knows what these are. But here it is. Watch this. And look what Peter says. Peter says, yes, Lord. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lamb. Verse 16, he said to him again, a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. Verse 17, Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter got upset. Peter says, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. He said to him, feed my sheep. Can I come get you? Peter denied Jesus three times. And three times, Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? Because love covers a multitude of sin. I wish I had somebody. Don't give up on your Peter. You got to keep on loving on people. Jesus says, Peter, I can't give up on you. He said, because it's not over. Because I got work for you to do, Peter, even though you blew it. Here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. Here it is. Says, Peter, do you love me? I, 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 I have three minutes, three minutes. Acts chapter 2, verse 38, down to verse 41, and then we're going to commune with the Lord. And I'll let you enjoy your brunch. Because y'all make it a point after the church on Sunday. You're supposed to enjoy the Sabbath day. Watch. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Look what the Bible says here. In Acts 2, then Peter said to them, repent and let Every one of you will be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Here it is. For the promise is to you and to your children, to all who are far off, talking about us, as many as the Lord our God will call, talking about us. And then look what he says. Watch this. He, verse, what, what I said? We go to verse 41. Watch this. Then those who were gladly received the word were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 souls was added to them. Here's the point. Guess who was the main speaker that day? Peter. It was Peter. God says, Peter, it's not over. Even, and why, ooh, ooh, for free, for free. If you read it, Jesus never threw in his face what he did. Jesus never even brought it up. He never condemned him. He never said nothing about it. Read the Bible. He never said, Peter, you never said nothing. 
Sometimes you just got to let it go. And when people mess up, stop, stop bringing it up. Because we act like we ain't never messed up. My last one. Elbow your neighbor in the side. Say, neighbor, I promise you, it's not over. Because God could take what seems to be impossible and make it possible. Come on, we all are standing. We all are standing. We all are standing. It's not over. It's not over. You can't mess up enough for God to stop loving you. Peter preached that 3,000 got saved. Can I, can, I, can I just throw this out here for free? I don't know who this is for. 80% of a relationship doesn't matter what it is 80% of a relationship is forgiveness I said 80% of a relationship is forgiveness because many of us are in relationships people with brother, sister, mom, daddy boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife that here it is, watch this we want the other person to be perfect, but then we know we're not perfect. I don't want you to mess up. I don't want you to say nothing wrong. I don't want you to do nothing wrong. But I know sometimes I say stuff wrong. I know I do stuff wrong. But I don't want you to do it. Jesus forgave Peter and never put it up. Never. Man. I don't know who that's for, but, but the Holy Spirit just punched somebody in the stomach. I don't know. <laughs> I like getting y'all business. Fire, fire. Lord, just hit somebody. Well, if you standing next to your husband or your wife, just look at him. <laughs> I'm just trying to put peace in your house. I'm trying to put peace in your house. I'm trying to put joy in your house. Listen, we're about to commune with the Lord. If you would now, for the fourth time this year, we're going to commune with the Lord. If you would, expose now the bread that represents his broken body. It's not over for you. It's not over for you. It's not over for you. But pastor, you don't understand. It's not over. Pa no, you don't, no, you don't understand. Listen. Thank you, baby. Thank you. If you would now, the Bible says in the night, that Jesus was betrayed, that he took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, eat, for this is my broken body. And they all did eat. Hallelujah. If you would now expose now the juice that represents his shed blood. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. After supper, again giving thanks, he said to his disciples, this is the New Testament of my blood. He says, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. And they all did drink. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, today is Sunday. Today is the Sabbath. I did a teaching last year on the Sabbath day, how the Sabbath day is about spending time with family and friends. It's about a day of, of fun, of fellowship. It is the day you're supposed to re get to refresh and get ready for the following week. So I want many of you today, spend time with family, with friends, even if it's just one, you and somebody, just spend time with someone. Someone who likes being around you and someone you like being around. This is the day. This is the Sabbath day. I hope you've been blessed. Hope you've been encouraged. But listen, I want to pray with you and pray for you. Head for, head for the exit doors. But I want to let you know once again, it's not over. God is not through blessing you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you. We thank you. We give you glory, we give you honor, we bless your holy name. God, thank you for our time of gathering. I pray now, God, that our hearts have been strengthened, our faith is renewed. 
I pray now, God, that somebody today say, Pastor, you and the Lord were speaking to me. And Father, I pray now that we'll never give up on our Peters because we used to be Peter. So God, we thank you now. We ask now that you be with us all day long this week. Cover us, protect us, keep us from all hurt, harm, and danger. We love you, we bless you. Cover us now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go in peace. I love you, Beacon Life. Look forward to seeing you.